Welcome to Real Gardens, where each week we're out in the garden, sharing in all the hard work with our group of amateur gardeners. This week, Carol Klein is up to her knees in mud with police officers Adrian and Debbie. Anne-Marie Powell is getting all creative with sticky back plastic in Lisa's garden in Harrow. And I'm running around with Brownie, bringing a little bit of Versailles to her Norfolk garden. This narrow, cluttered back garden in Harrow belongs to Lisa Jacobson and her family. Lisa has been here for 18 months, but she's had little chance to get to work on her garden because she's always busy chasing after her two young children, Sophia and Grace. Hello. To work in the garden with the children is virtually impossible. You can't do a single thing. But I don't tend to do anything that would take my mind off her because obviously it can be dangerous. Sophia, do you want to come and help me here? If I have an area where they can play, then I can get on with some gardening because I know that they're safe and I really would like it to be just bright, colourful, safe and fun. Last time Anne-Marie was here, the two of them were in demolition mode, clearing the end of the garden in preparation for the children's play area. What remained was a tatty old shed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? While we've been away, Lisa and her sister Suzanne have been busy clearing the junk from the garden to the dump and attempting to move the shed. I'm not sort of woman that will tackle things all by herself. I do need some sort of guidance. I'm a bit weak and feeble when it comes to sort of <laughs> manual labour. <laughs> so I do need some... I'm not afraid to do it, but I, I need some instructions. I need pointing in the right direction, etc. They eventually managed to move the shed onto the lawn in time for Anne-Marie's visit today to make it easier to do it up and to repair the foundations. All Lisa has to do now is sell the idea to Anne-Marie. We've had deliveries all week with the AstroTurf and flooring. It's been quite exciting, so we've got lots of work to do. I must let you know that my carpentry skills are absolutely rubbish. Mm. Well, <laughs> between us, we can knock something up, I reckon. I think it that's going to be... can't be too difficult, really. It's quite small. Uh, my favourite is this, full of clematises. Wow! <laughs> very kitsch and very fun. Nelly and, uh, Moser. Yeah. She gets everywhere, actually. We used to say she was a bit of a brazen hussy. <laughs> well, so. that suits perfectly then. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm really be brilliant, to it. isn't fantastic. it? Fantastic, yeah. But as always, before the fun bits, we can't resist a bit more destruction. We want to turn the shed around by 90 degrees, so we need to rearrange the foundations to fit, making sure they're level. So if we put this brick in here now, hopefully it'll be fairly flat. See so if we're, we're going to need to pack that up a bit, so that's the level there. Mm. Now we've got the base the right shape, we need to create a flat surface by filling in the cracks with some earth. Do you know what? Mm -hmm. I reckon we should get this door off. Okay. So get unscrewing. Work out how to use this. No way, come here. Hey. What we want to do is to move the door to what will now be the front of the shed. Off she comes. And there she comes. <laughs> we need a bit of carpentry action going on here, mm -hmm. don't we? Yeah. New How door. on earth are we going to do that? Well, I To make the new door frame, we need a pair of 3 by 2 timber battens, which Lisa's brother David has picked up for us. With the amount of work ahead of us, we need all the help we can get. Oh. Lovely. I've worked out that this is six inches wider than our door, mm -hmm. so we need to make a new frame right. out of bits of three by two. Which we prepared earlier. So they'll sort of slot in there. Yeah. We'll hammer them into this, mm -hmm. and then we'll nail these bits of shiplap onto here. Yeah. And then we can hang our new door. Mm -hmm. So that's a theory. The shed leans to one side, so with David pulling it upright, we can fix the door frame into position. The frame will also help brace the shed, making it sturdier and straighter. Perfect. Once we've screwed the new door post into position and attached the lap board to them, we can cut out the middle section. Fortunately, David comes complete with an electric jigsaw and he knows how to use it. Right, mate, do you want to tidy up your messy edges? And moments later, the new doorway is complete. Marvellous! After blocking up the old doorway, we're ready to move the shed into its new permanent position. Luckily for us, Lisa's sister Suzanne has turned up again just in time to help lug the shed into its new position. She only popped in for a cup of tea. <laughs> So, 
It's bend the knees, not the back. You're right, Lisa. Right, got a job. Right. You see these panels here? Mm -hmm. We need to cut out some marine ply all the way over there and then line it with those clematis sticky back panels that you've got. Mm -hmm. So I've drawn out the side here and there's these two panels here. Yep. So you need to measure it and then cut it down to size. Okay. Me and Dave are going to get on the roof and sort that out. Lovely. All right. Okay. The marine ply panels will give us the flat surface we need for the sticky back plastic. Here is 42 inches. This AstroTurf is fab. It doesn't matter if it gets wet and it comes in a range of funky colours. It's not cheap and it can be hard to get. We got ours mail order from a sports equipment supplier. Lisa's marine ply panels are marked out and ready to cut. Sadly, there's more jigging than sawing. Oh, no, I've done. You see, in the middle, there's a little... What do you think? Well, these are nice. I've not seen these before. Where would yeah. you get them from? Wheelie bin cover company. Oh, nice. Okay. Right, so aren't they? What do we do? Just stick it down? Or? Yeah. Bang in the middle about there. Yeah. You two look like you're struggling. Okay. Why don't you use that to just mm -hmm. spray? Slide it. Okay. Right, oh, wow. Yeah. Great top tip. Well done. <laughs> what do we do without you? Oh, I do this every day, you know. <laughs> We can wow! Take it do you know what? I didn't think it'd go on flat. I was convinced mm. it wouldn't. So all you need to do now is get some nice off cuts and put it around the side. Yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we did we think about that. that. <laughs> we, we weren't planning to leave it like this. <laughs> it makes a, a mad impact. It certainly makes a statement. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what kind of statement. At last, the shed is really coming together. There's just a few finishing touches to go. Hey. The door transplant has been successful. First, some child-friendly perspex in the windows, then brightly coloured window boxes. <laughs> They're going to love this, aren't they? <laughs> that is. It's groovy. And finally, some polyanthus and beaded curtains to complete the picture. I can't believe it. No, all in one day. All is well done. done. Fantastic. Yeah, but we wouldn't have got it done if your brother and sister had not turned up, yeah. would we? So did you do this for the kids or for you? A bit of both, I think. Bryony Jacqueline is an obsessive gardener. Since moving into their family house in North Norfolk, she's made a garden out of what was three acres of rough grass. Brownie has created a whole range of beds and borders in the garden using plants that either she propagates herself or else acquires by more resourceful methods. On my last visit, I helped to improve the look of her driveway with native Alexanders from the local vicarage. I have to say, I didn't really think they were going to take. Well, come and have a look at this. You said it couldn't be done. That's extraordinary. So a week later, there are signs of distinct growth. Yeah, cutting off the top that did it. All right, you win. Let's go and have a look at this roundel. Now, what is a roundel? Well, it's going to go here. <laughs> I don't know where it's going to go. What, what is it? Oh, well, for you non-visual people, I've got a plan. I am not a non-visual person. God, you know how to wound someone. Now, which bit is the actual roundel? Just this bit. This is kind of phase one, which is the backdrop to it. And I've completed this, which is a dogwood hedge. And then this is a, there's a, a focal point right at the end, which right. is a wild cherry. And these are wildflower beds, which we're going to come back to another time. So for today, I just want to mark the whole lot out and take out the central bed. I'm not going okay. to ask you to dig it all. And then you have this idea of this bloke who comes <laughs> once a week to do the digging. If only! Right, so we measure it out with this, do we? Make a big compass. We're using a cane to mark the centre of the circular bed, which, according to Bryony, should measure six foot across. Have you thought about this long and hard? For two whole years, oh, really? I've been mulling this one over. So yeah. six foot, one, I'll get some canes. two, three, four, five, six. Now, my feet are exactly a foot long, <laughs> I bet. So that is six foot dead there. Actually, Monty, that makes that 12. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well. One. I never could count. Well, with Bryony keeping a watchful eye on my counting, we can mark out the widths of the alternating beds and pathways. Three and a bit. 
I bet you were good at ballet as well. Couldn't you tell? <laughs> Brownie's ideas have been inspired by the historic gardens of European country houses dating back to the 16th century. So we're actually bringing our own bit of Versailles to Norfolk. Even though it may not look as I'm exerting myself. Voila. So you walk in here, walk round here. Well, go like this, you see. Do, oh, we have, do we have to trot? <laughs> it's running. It's a running it's a garden. It's running okay. action. Well, that works all right. Now, all we have to do is lift the turf. Luckily for us, Brownie's son Christopher is home from school. You want a hand? Yeah. If you're willing. Put this. Cutting the turf by hand is harder work than hiring in a machine to do it, but it's cheaper and far more accurate. Well, so you'll keep these and stack them face to face. Yeah. Like that. In a big stack. And a couple of years, you just slice down it. It makes lovely potting compost. Yeah, you just need somewhere out of the way where you can forget about them. As the grass is slowly replaced by the bare earth underneath, Brian's design starts to become more apparent. Many hands make light work, and it's not long before we're ready to bring on the box cuttings that Brownie has propagated yeah. for the centre bed. OK, what sort of space here? Well, I'd quite like this kind of staggered. Right, so we're looking at what, nine inch or six inch oh, space? Oh, it's six. OK, about like We've that. We've got plenty to go at. OK. Yeah. Like that? Perfect. Right. And this in the middle? Yeah, he's going to go into a cone when he's a big boy. Okay, Ready? yeah. Now, are these Sofriticosa or Sempervirens? Sempervirens. So they're going to get quite bushy. Yeah, how right. high do you want them to be? Oh, about 12, 15 inches. So there's a nice, thick, so, architectural I mean, little hedge. Yeah, I mean, it's going to need clipping quite a lot, isn't it? Well, it'll be a twice a year much. job, yeah. Make more work for yourself. I don't believe in low-maintenance gardening. It's fun. It's a good, good way to keep fit. That's as much as we can do to the randall at the moment because the plants for the surrounding beds are still in their seed trays and won't be ready till May. Now these are some of the things I'm going to put in the roundel and they're just about ready for pricking off. Oh, they are tiny though, aren't they? So it's mega production here to cover that surface What's area. What's this? This is clary. This isn't ready. It isn't actually. It hasn't got true leaves, has it? No. Right. Most seedlings shouldn't be pricked out until they've got two pairs of leaves. And these little ones... This is calamint. Tiny. But, but ready. Yeah, but ready, yeah. okay. And here, which you have prepared dutifully, is a seed tray, and we'll just prick these out. Yeah. What do you use for pricking? Uh, a little paintbrush. I use my knife. Well, I'd just cut the roots off with that. Well, oh, look at the roots on that. Tiny, but perfectly good roots. So we're just taking these, holding them by the leaf, gently easing them in, nice and deep. And don't firm them in, that's a crucial yeah. thing, isn't it? Now, this compost has got a bit of sharp bit of, sand in it, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and a bit of grit added yeah. as well. You don't add any nutrients at all at this stage? No. This is the one job that my mother still helps me with, and it's lovely. We can spend an afternoon together. You need a radio programme, you need the rain beating down yeah. outside, and more delicate fingers than I've got. Now, will you prick all these out? Well, I think I'm going to need a couple of hundred, so I will, because um, there are bound to be some losses along the way. And these are perennials, so I'm looking for um, you know, early start, so they'll flower this year. That's an awful lot of seed trays with composting. Yeah, well, you only buy them once, seed trays, and um, I'm very lucky that compost is um, always a birthday present, just at the right time of year. It's your birthday on Saturday, isn't it? Yeah. All right, we'll just wait there for a moment. We've got a little present for you. No! We got you. <laughs> a Monty's mag! It's a magnolia. Oh, it's fabulous! I don't know what to say. Oh, quite overcome. <laughs> <laughs> After the break, Carol is back in Devon, wading about in rubber with Adrian and Debbie. Welcome back. If you've got a young tree in the garden, it's really important to clear all growth around it. Now, one way of doing that is, of course, to spray with a weed killer, but I don't use weed killers. 
and there's just as an effective method. What you need to do is take the turf out around it, just lift it off, carefully you don't chop through the tree, to a reasonable way all around it. Clear it of all weeds. The bare soil means that all the rain and the goodness is going to go into that tree and it's going to grow twice as fast as a result. But if you leave it bare soil, the weeds will start growing again, the grass will grow in and you're back to square one. So what I do is use a suppressing mat, which you can buy from any garden centre, but don't use black polythene because that will stop the weeds all right, but it will also stop the water going through. Whatever you put down must be porous. So if you put something over it, like bark or grass clippings, hay, straw, whatever you can get, that will be much nicer to look at and the tree will grow twice as well as a result. Now, we're off to Dartmoor, where Adrian and Debbie have heeded Carol's advice that she left them with on her last visit, but they've added their own interpretation. Debbie and Adrian's bungalow has spectacular views and a steeply sloping garden. They both lead very busy lives in the police force, so gardening comes as a welcome relief to the couple, who spend as much time as they can outdoors. Okay, I'm going to try it. On her last visit, Carol discovered that their main bed had been planted up in cheap job lots. She came across nearly 30 of Adrian's favourite shrubs, Budlia. So she completely redesigned the 50-foot bed with a planting plan. They only got as far as replanting about a sixteenth of the bed, but they promised Carol they'd strip the rest of it out and have it replanted before her next visit. We actually got on very well with the bed, didn't we, together, because... Once, we, once no, we agreed, no, once we had agreed that you would decide where the plants were. I did most of the planting and Adrian did most of the um, heavy work. Are you ready? Yeah. They've kept to their promise and transformed this massive bed. They're happy with the results of their hard work. But what will Carol's verdict be? Stand by, stand by. OK, open your eyes. My God! <laughs> it's all done, you've done it! I know. <laughs> Look at this fence! Have you had the entire Devon police force here doing this? No, just no. me, Debbie. And what amazes me this, it's very like the plan. Let's have a look. You can see how we've, we've used the swathes coming down, the big groups of plants. You really have? It's <laughs> yeah. not just a, a pretty picture, it's actually no, worked. We did actually use it, yeah. I love this seat. We're going to put um, marjoram marjoram in there, so when you lean back, it's nice and smelly. Oh, yeah. It's really nice. We have lost a few things, as you can see. We what, these lavenders? In. Some of those at the back might be all right, and if not, this is going to. This one's growing so happily, it's really going yeah. to join up with those others anyway, yeah. isn't it? So. I think it's wonderful, I really do. No, and yet I can't see a single budlier. <laughs> oh, yes, there uh, is. There's one over there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> the one that got away. But we've got other things to do today, haven't we? We have. What's yeah. all this about getting in the water? <laughs> We're going to have to get in the water. We're going to want to clear the leak down. Do we? we? Yeah, we, yes, do. we do. I suppose we can have to get, get our, our waders on. Oh. Come on, then. Let's get going. Adrian and Debbie clear the leak once a year in spring to stop it getting clogged up. Yeah. I can see one thing you've really got to get out straight away, and that's this hemlock water droplet. Oh, golly. This is one of the most poisonous plants in the, really? in the country. Yeah, it is. And um, although it's a wild plant, I really think you ought to get it out and right. get rid of it if you possibly can. I've got a secret weapon. All right. <laughs> That's going to help a lot. Yeah. yeah. You should cover your skin because um, it can really irritate it badly. And this plant's responsible for more fatalities than um, really? any other indigenous plant. But they root all up the stem on every... Every single Ooh. leaf node. <laughs> <laughs> did you mean to do that, Adrian? Yes, <laughs> yes I did. <laughs> <laughs> I can try you from back. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. You're right. <laughs> yeah, of course I'm all right. Like, I'm you didn't sorry. even get the roots <laughs> out, honestly. All that effort for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> now get, get hold of a handful. This plant smells like celery. Always grows close to water, with flat heads of white flowers in summer. Its common name is dead tongue because it paralyzes your tongue if you eat it. That's good. That's good. Hey, oh, lovely! Look at that. Yeah, that's what you want—the whole of the, the whole of the root to come out. There we go. Yes, yes. Debbie's cutting back the nettles and brambles. They're an important habitat for wildlife, so she's only giving them a light trim. Ah. 
<laughs> Ready, one, two, three. Oh. You're not wet, are you? No, not a bit. <laughs> look how clear it looks now, it's brilliant. I think it looks a bit bare. Can we look for a few things to plant as well? We've got some things up in the bug garden and possibly the holding beds that we took out the big right. bed. We found a clump of water-loving irises up near the pond, which we're going to plant into the leet. It's definitely Iris Sudacurus, isn't it? This wonderful golden flag, the big yellow one. Yeah, that's right. And it lives beside running water, so it should be ideal. Quite at home. I think it's important to leave as much soil on Brilliant. as we can. Look the irises are a native plant, which is just as well, because non-native plants which spread downstream can be a menace to waterways. Can we take it right down there? Yeah, I think that'll be the best place down there. Over Adrian's dam. I think one of these, um, you are right. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm like a Capricorn, I'm like a goat. How about here? Do you think that, that's a good place? Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. Right, just two things you've got to remember. First of all, those roots actually grow in soil. Yeah. So leave plenty of soil on the roots and right. try and make sure they're in real contact with whatever's underneath there. Yeah. And the second thing is you've got to find some way of stopping the whole thing floating off right. and going into your neighbour's garden or further okay. down. Now, don't you think if you just nestle it in yeah, and yeah. then push it right down... Oh, it looks like it's been there forever, look. We're using some heavy stones to lodge the irises in place. They should grow to form a big clump and they'll flower in late May to early June. Next, Adrian and Debbie want to improve the look of their Devon bank with some wildflowers. Well, we've got all those primroses we dug up a couple of weeks ago. We've got those yeah, in the holding bed, so um, they'll be good. I've got some packets of wildflower seeds. Yeah. I thought maybe we could scratch them into the surface and let them self-seed. We could try, but I think you might find that uh, there's a bit too much competition from all this rough grass and everything. Mm. I think you might be better off with those little wildflower plugs you can get from a specialist yeah. nursery. Right. But with yeah. a bit of luck, we, you know, we might find enough stuff in your own garden. Adrian and Debbie's woodland area has lots of suitable meadow flowers, so here. Debbie and I are digging for some purslin and forget-me-nots. Meanwhile, Adrian raids his holding beds for some primroses. With our amphibious wheelbarrow stuffed with plants, we form a human chain and plant up our Devon bank. Since these are all wildflowers, they won't need any feeding. That looks lovely. Right, pretty damn good, eh? Yeah. Pretty good. So how often should I stream this cow? Well, I think because these are all early flowering subjects, yeah. if you stream just once in kind of late August, right. yeah. and that way you'll help distribute the seed too. Wonderful. And before you know it, the whole bank <laughs> will just be a mass of wildflowers. Lovely. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah I look forward to that. That's it for this week. Next week, Carol will be roping in all Diana's family to help them blitz her vegetable patch before it gets too late. Anne-Marie is going to be walking the plank with Mike and Alison in the bog garden, and I'm here in the pond with Brani, helping to protect her plants from predators. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.